All right, Mike, you have a breakout candidate that will be very polarizing yes. for our audience. It, it will be. But we we had a very impassioned listener of the show right oh, in. Oh, I'm, I'm staring at his email. Right right into uh, to the show to uh, say how how can we possibly think that Daniel Jones is going to be a breakout fantasy football player? He, he, he's a Giants fan. And a lot of capital letters in uh, this email, Mike. Look, they, he, he, and, and he brought it. He brought the fire. But I still believe in Daniel <laughs> Jones as a fantasy breakout quarterback. And the reason I am going with that one, to me, if when I'm watching Daniel Jones play, yes, he made a lot of mistakes. He's a rookie quarterback. Rookie quarterbacks make a lot of mistakes. Those fumbles, the, the, that's unforgivable. What he, what he did in the fumble Number department. Number one in the NFL in turnover-worthy plays per game in a season where Jameis Winston did that. Yes, because he fumbled the ball. However, he only threw 12 interceptions, which as a rookie, that's that's not too bad. But here's what I want to highlight about Daniel Jones. The last 10 years, rookie quarterbacks that have played at least 10 games, they've started this, those 10 games and averaged 250 passing yards per game. Andrew Luck... Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, and Daniel Jones. That is it. He is in there with elite category. He put up the 10th best fantasy season for a rookie quarterback. And he started 12 games. In 12 games, he threw 24 touchdowns. That's the fourth most for a rookie quarterback of all time. Of all time. That put his pace at 32 touchdowns, which... Would have blown Baker Mayfield's rookie record out of the water. It would have been the only rookie quarterback to ever throw for 30 touchdowns. Now, I get it. He didn't do that. But still, the fourth most touchdowns in 12 games. That's very impressive. He joined Deshaun Watson as uh, as the second rookie quarterback ever to have three games with four-plus passing touchdowns. That's a very impressive feat. And that's if, you, if you're discounting the game, his first start where he had two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. Like, he put up monster games. He was inconsistent, yes, but he was a rookie, and he runs the ball. I was going to say, in 12 games, 279 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Yes, he he put up. Uh, he was on a pace of 365 rushing yards. That's not yes. I get it. That's not Lamar Jack's numbers, but it's helpful. That no, is, no one is Lamar that's, Jack's. That's exactly. Alex, I'm saying old Alex. Smith those numbers. are like Alex Smith numbers, where you're averaging over 20 rushing yards a game. That eliminates one mistake right there, and we know he is working on his ball security. Then Daniel Jeremiah recently tweeted out something that caught my attention because it's it's something you kind of know inherently, but you didn't realize this. In each team's projected 11 personnel, so one running back, one tight end, three wide, based on the 40-yard dash, the Giants have, as a group, the fastest ensemble of weapons, even faster than the weapons in Kansas City. He is surrounded by speed. Like Daniel Jones is willing to throw the ball downfield, but he doesn't have to. He can just trust the players to, to run five yards in front of him and take it to the house on top of everything where the numbers are trending in a very positive direction. Their defense stinks. They are really, really bad. They're, the game scripts are going to be in favor of Daniel Jones. Last year, the Giants, 30th best, as we would call them. <laughs> Their free agency additions, James Bradbury, the 75th uh, ranked <laughs> corner, according to Pro Football Focus. Blake Martinez, linebacker, ranked 58th, according to Pro Football Focus last year. Like These are not awe-inspiring additions to the defensive side of the field. Daniel Jones is going to have to throw the ball a lot, and he is surrounded by talent. I think Daniel Jones is a breakout quarterback. You worry about Jason Garrett? I don't. I I do not worry do about Jason Garrett. Do you think that Daniel Jones had to do too much in a way? It almost seems like he is training himself to be the next Jameis Winston, which for fantasy owners out there, by the way, don't hear what we're not saying. Mike, to my knowledge, has not predicted the Giants to be Super Bowl contenders. No, I, talking, and I don't care. There's a differentiation <laughs> between – Fantasy success and NFL success, clearly, that could not be better illustrated than Jameis Winston, right. who broke records and was dismissed. He was great in fantasy football yes. and literally couldn't get another gig in the real Yeah, 5,000 yards, 
can't start for another team. So Daniel Jones last year had uh, four games where he was either the number one or number two fantasy quarterback. The rushing yardage helps. My question to you, Mike, was just going to be, Saquon struggled to stay healthy last year. Mm -hmm. Did Daniel Jones have to do too much? Saquon wasn't able to do as much. Did that inflate some of those rookie touchdown totals? It's it's certainly possible, but I would counter that by saying this. Daniel Jones put up those 24 touchdowns that I talked about. Games that Daniel Jones played with his three starting wide receivers, four. That's yeah. four games. Yeah, no that, Evan Ingram. That it, and the, yeah, I'm not even counting Ingram. I'm just saying games that Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton were all on the field together four times. Like this, I I really really believe that Daniel Jones will be a top ten quarterback by the end of the year. Now well, he starts now, the now, season. Now his schedule: Pittsburgh, yes. Chicago, the, San Francisco. The schedule sucks, and that he, the opening schedule is is brutal for Daniel Jones. He's a DND. I, I don't do think not it, draft. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's impossible that Daniel Jones comes out and is very surprising in these first few weeks. But even with my love and my projecting for Daniel Jones, he's not likely to be a player I'm targeting in the draft. He will be a player that I am targeting to pick up off the waiver wire like week three or week four. Yeah, that makes sense. And to, to speak to your question real quick, Andy, about with Saquon not there, did he have to do too much? In those games that Saquon wasn't there, he actually was on a – it was only three games, but it was a 16-game pace of 16 passing touchdowns. When Saquon came back in week seven on, that's when he had a 16-game pace of 38 touchdowns. He was much, Just, much better makes the offense when better. Saquon was in there. All right, you guys want to talk about some early buzz? Mm. <laughs> Let's do it. If you want more of that, click down there, see the whole episode, click over there, subscribe to the show. We're here all year round. Do not miss it.